Anyways, so um, I know that last week I talked about the inexpensive palettes that I like to use, and this is definitely one of them. This is the Morphe Gelat Gelat Jaclyn Hill collection. It is part of her bowl. I do have the entire bowl. Um, and this is the Ring, no, the Armed and Gorgeous palette. Um, this palette is just a very colorful palette. We're going to be playing with this color and some of the orange tones in there. Maybe we'll dip into some of the glitter colors. But this is a really good quality palette. All of her palettes in this bulk collection are gorgeous. I also have her Jaclyn Hill um, actual palette, the huge one. So really do check them out, guys. But let's get started with this look. So I'm going into this eyeshadow right here. It's called Access. Um, and I am going to keep Access. Majority of the color is going to be in the inner corner of the eye. So this is going to be a different approach to how we do our eyeshadow. I know that usually we'll do a crease color and then we'll go into a lower color, outer corner, inner corner, lid shade. But today we're going to definitely try something different. Um, it's going to be very colorful. So we'll start right off the bat with a nice fluffy brush. Shake off any excess. We want total control. And by shaking off the excess, you prevent from a lot of powder flying everywhere and messing things up. So we're gonna take this color, where'd that glitter come from? We're gonna take this color right into this inner corner here. And it's okay if it gets into the inner, inner corner, we want it there. That's where it's gonna live for this eyeshadow look. And it's okay if it goes high. Notice that I did leave my brows bare. Um, there's two reasons for that. I've been doing less with my brows lately just because they're a little fuller. And um, the second reason is because I know that this is kind of gonna get a little messy before it gets cute, so. We'll just leave the brows for last. So I'm stopping about right about halfway just because the other shade is going to come in and meet us in between. So what I'm going to do now actually is I'm realizing this brush is a little too fluffy and too big. So we're going to switch gears here and I'm going to go into a less fluffy brush. This is the JH32. Still a blending brush. It's just a little more dense. And you're just gonna take that same color and we're gonna build on this color quite a bit today just because it is gonna be a colorful, a two color mostly look, um, but it's gonna be pretty intense. So we're just gonna build and build and build. I'm actually gonna leave that color right there because I'm okay with that until we meet the two colors and then I'll just play it by ear. Same thing to the other eye here. When it comes to placing your eyeshadow, I do need um, to express that you should definitely touch the brush down on the skin where you want the most pigment. So for us, that is going to be this inner corner. So I want to make sure that I almost pat the majority of the product on the brush in this area and then we can worry about blending. And I know that sometimes when we're sitting here on camera, it just looks like we're blending, 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 but I'm really just patting these colors into place and that's really important for this look. Okay, great. So once we've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a different blending brush. Kind of the same idea. It's just going to be clean. Uh, this guy right here, it's also by Jaclyn Hill. It's a 31. We just used a 32, which looks like this, a little longer. This is a 31. The shorter bristles just means that I'm going to get um, more payoff in the colors instead of it blending. So we're going to have to work with the blending, but that's okay. And we're actually going to go into this shade here that's called Secure. Yes, secure, which is right here. And we are going to blend that into the outer corner and then start working that and blending it into the two shades here quite evenly. And this is like a hint darker, I feel like, than the first color, but we're gonna work on that. So what I'm doing is just creating a nice little flick on the outer corner here, because I don't use too much liner but I do love flicking it out with the eyeshadow so we're gonna do that you see how it's almost like a gradient effect which is what you want when you do colorful looks like this you never want it to look choppy you always want it to look like a gradient effect and we're gonna build on that warm orange tone I've got a deeper one that I can use here but I just want to make sure that I get a good base a good foundation under Make sure we're using light pressure with the brush. I don't know if you guys realize where it is that I'm actually holding the brush. It's not way down here like if I were writing. The pressure is going to be way too intense. So just make sure you're holding it at the very end of the brush. And you're very lightly doing circular motions and not too big. It's all really in the wrist. Okay, so the colors are okay as is for now. I'm going to deepen that outer corner even more. And I'm going to use the JH33. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toggle in between these two shades. So there's Smooth Criminal, and then there's also this guy right here, which is Agent. And I'm gonna just dip into the two and we are going to deepen this outer corner some. Um, I'm actually going to leave the eye look like this. I am not hating it. I don't, I don't know if we have to add glitter to everything. I, know, I said it, but we're not. So we're just gonna leave it like that. And so what I'm gonna do now is take a uh, face wipe and we are going to just kind of sharpen up these outer edges here. I don't always cut it way too high. You wanna make sure that there is something that's gonna be able to connect the bottom and the top lash line. So straight to the other side. And remember that if we have a little extra, a little more than what we actually want, you can always go back and clean it up when we do our concealer. So we've got color on the eyelids, perfectly fine. Um, I'm not doing lashes today, but we are gonna do a very nice coat of mascara. So I'm gonna use my um, Hourglass Caution Mascara. I am a huge fan, number one. Look how luxurious that is. Like very luxurious and very serious, very James Bond. Like if you had this in your little wristlet, just whip it out. Um, so it gives great volume. I am not a huge fan of huge barrel brushes, but this guy has a really, really nice size barrel. Your lashes just, oh, get volume, they get length, they're nicely separated. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I could live with that. Okay, so I've zoomed you guys out and we are ready to start on complexion. So today for complexion, we are actually trying out some new products, which I'm excited. This is the Milk Cosmetics Hydro Grip Primer. So this primer is said to hydrate. It is said to help the makeup last and stay over 24 hours. I'm actually gonna look it up here on the Sephora app so that you and I can kind of learn about it together. Just because I've heard great things, great reviews, but I really haven't looked into it at all. So let's learn together, people. Okay, so it is a hydrating makeup gripping primer formulated with hemp-derived cannabis seed extract and blue agave extract for all day hydration and hold. Hemp-derived cannabis seed extract hydrates, smooths the look of skin, and it also provides antioxidant benefits. The blue agave is an invisible layer that grips to any makeup, it smooths texture, seals in moisture, and then it also has pear cactus extract and aloe water, which hydrates, soothes, and calms the skin. So, huh. it's got some hyaluronic acid in it, vitamin B, it's silicone free, oil free. So you're supposed to simply allow the formula to sit for one minute to fully absorb and activate grip for the best results. So we're gonna try that guy out. And then another product by Milk that we're gonna try out is, there's two more products that we're gonna try out. The other one is a makeup blur foundation, the blur liquid foundation. Um, so this foundation is a full coverage foundation. It's good for normal skin, oily skin, combination skin. It's got a matte finish. It's an ultra weightless, full coverage foundation. It's oil free, silicone free, it lets the skin just breathe. Um, the last product by them is the setting powder. So the setting powder is like an all over the face type of color. I got the medium and translucent. They've got um, like a clear one and a deeper one. This is the middle. There's like a deep, medium, and then there's a translucent one. And I got the medium just to kind of help me set all over my face. I'm gonna use the hourglass one to set under the eyes, but enough rambling, uh, let's get to working. So let's take this Hydro Grip Primer and we're going to put that all over. And it says to let it sit for a minute. So we're gonna just let that sit. I can feel it start to get nice and tacky, which is always a good sign. Um, I'm not a fan of full matte finishing foundations, so what I'm going to do is take some of the Milk Makeup Foundation and then I'm also going to take my Becca Aqua Luminous Foundation. The Milk Makeup almost seems too dark for me and this one is too light, so we're going to just come up with a concoction here. 
to get Jovi's perfect formula. If you guys are looking for a summertime, like going to the beach, going to the pool foundation, um, going on a cruise and you want something that's like glowy, dewy, radiant, this Becca Aqua Luminous Foundation is amazing for that. So we're just gonna use, I mix it with my finger, so I'm taking whatever is left over from that and we'll apply it with a brush today. I'm using a buffing brush. I always use buffing brushes. Um, for the most part, at least, I really fall in love with that. This one right here by Luxie. It's like an airbrush finish. I really love that. Sephora also has a really good one. Um, but for the most part, I like buffing brushes just because they get it done. There's coverage. There's also smoothing. The product, for the most part, stays on the very top part of the brush. So I get the most amount of coverage without having to use as much product. I'm gonna use the Creaseless Concealer by Tarte and I'm using it in the shade Fair Light Neutral. This is a very hydrating concealer, um, so I would definitely suggest to use a little bit, definitely full coverage. I would start by placing it, and you're gonna see what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna place it closer to the actual um, bone instead of in the very inner corner like I would a different concealer just because this is very hydrating so it will move and what you want to do is just use the product sparingly versus overdoing it and I am just going to take a dry beauty sponge and blend that out starting at the very edges of this bone and taking whatever's left over up into the inner corner bridge of the nose and I should have known better, but this is absolutely a very good full coverage concealer. This is definitely a concealer that you could use as like a no makeup look and just put it all over your face if you get it in the right shade. I love this concealer and I recommend it to all of my clients that are just telling me they're super dry or they feel like their under eyes just need a little oomph. Um, this is a really good concealer for that. Just look how bright that area looks. Look at how hydrated it looks. We are going to set it just a little bit. So I'm just going to even out the rest of my complexion by applying a little more concealer. Um, I like using this concealer with a dry sponge versus a damp one. So I'm gonna go into these areas real quick before we set and then I'm gonna take our hourglass. The nice thing about the hourglass, um, the way that they've designed this little dispenser is that it is meant to be able to cover your entire face with just one like flip of the lid and you're not wasting powder or overdoing it. So what I like to do is pat it into place and then swipe whatever's left over. And you guys can see it took some of the shine away, which is very good, and but it also left it bright looking. like I can't talk when I'm messing with my eyes or my hair. I make the ugliest faces when I'm doing my hair. It's awful. So all the areas where we just finished putting concealer, we're going to put this powder. And look how pretty it is. Oh, it is light. It is like Super smoothing. So good. So, so good. And what I like to do is run the edges of where the concealer stops with the powder that I'm using to set underneath. And I haven't had to like re dip or redistribute. It is seriously what was on that lid is what I'm still using and it is the perfect. So now that the under eyes are set, we're good to move on with contour. And the reason I did contour in a different order than I usually do is because I've noticed that I have to go in and put more if I don't do it this way. So we're going to cream contour. The nose I'm not going to do because we already put powders there and I don't want to find out what that looks like. Messing up this beautiful blend. We like, we like a lot. Okay, so that was a yes. 
Um, we're gonna leave it like this and we're just gonna set with a little bit of powder and we're gonna use our Milk Makeup Translucent Setting Powder for that. So this one looks a little different. It's got a net that helps to dispense the products out properly. So what I like to do is just tap some on the top of the lid because otherwise you were like creating a hot mess with that like net. It's very weird, but I like it once we do it like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it on a fluffy brush and we are going to lightly set our makeup. We are trying the Hula, the Benefit Hula bronzer. It is um, long time overdue. I feel like I should have used this a long time ago, but I've just had other things that I like, like the Kat Von D palette. I love that contouring palette. It highlights, it bronzes, it contours. I bought it over two years ago and I'm still getting really good use out of it. But this, we're gonna try. For a long time, they only had one shade, which was this one, the original Hoola, and then they did the Hoola Light, and now they have a bunch of other shades, which is really nice just because clients really like the quality of this product. They just couldn't find something to match their skin tone. We like, I'm gonna take a angled, small angled brush to help me contour the nose. So once we're done with that, we can go into highlighting. And for highlighting today, I thought we'd take it, we'd take it down a little bit, just a teensy bit. We're gonna use our Laura Mercier um, Translucent Powder and Glow. And we're gonna use her brush for it. I don't think that there's any other brush that's appropriate. So I'm gonna dip into the lid here and we're going to just make sure we're dispensing that properly and we're doing high parts of the face with this. Um, and then I'm going to take a little bit of an actual highlight. We are. We're going to take a little bit of an actual highlight. This is the Fenty um, highlight in Me, Money, and Hustle, baby. Hustle, hustle. So we're going to just dip into both of these. It's a very beautiful, very pigmented highlight. That's just going to build on what we've already had. Great. Last but not least, we're gonna go into blush and I'm gonna dip into these two shades right here from that NARS palette. It is the Narcissist 2, um, sorry, Unfiltered 2 palette. Unfiltered, not Narcissist. Using an angled brush, I like to work from the back end just because I don't want a rounded face. I want more of a cut here, my cheekbones. How do you like me now type of look? And I like to pat this on to whatever other layer we have already. So patting motions and dragging it to the center. Okay, so let's finish up our under eye area. We're gonna go back into the um, Armed and Gorgeous palette. And we're gonna just take that last brush we used to freshen up the yellow. We're gonna dip into that yellow again. And we're going to run that all over the lower lash line. Bringing it out pretty low, it's gonna help smoke. It is also gonna help camouflage any type of wrinkles that are happening down there. Okay guys, so we are almost there. Lash line on the bottom part is done. We're doing the inner corner highlight now. And we're gonna go into VIP, which is right here. Um, and we're gonna just highlight the heck out of our inner corner. This has been like, I've been waiting for this. So we're gonna put that right in for the inner corner here and we are just going to saturate the inner corner in this color. Just brighten it right up. This is a really pretty highlight. You can put this on your face. It works really well for fair skin. Next, we have eyebrows and lips to do. And like I promised, I'm doing a lot less with my brows. Um, but I don't think that I'm quite ready to meh. Let's just do it. I wasn't gonna show you guys, but let's just do it. So I'm taking the Revlon Color Stay pencil in the shade Soft Brown. This is a really good pencil. I don't honestly like anything from Revlon. I've just been really disappointed in their products, but this pencil is very, very good. It's very smooth. You can really blend the formula out. It is just very nice. So I'm just going to keep my brows pretty natural. And I'm gonna do the top part first. I always like to start on the top just because it, have, it helps me outline and just kind of get started. I find that I keep my brows more natural if I do it this way. And so then I'm gonna just trace the bottom here. And I've been growing this part out. So what I do is I kind of like fill in the space that isn't there. 
just to kind of help me keep my shape. And then just kind of create a tail. And you see the, the clumpiness is going on here. Once I run this fully, it like smooths it over. It's beautiful. After that is done, what I like to do is take my Benefit Gimme Brow in the shade four. And I just run a nice coat of this through them just to kind of wake them up, get rid of any excess powder that might have fell from setting anything. So um, what we're gonna do next is just add lots of color, um, which we're gonna do using this Buxom Plump Lip Liner and Intrigue. And I'm also gonna top it off with a gloss. I feel like when your hair is up and it's got this kind of spring tropical vibe, a gloss is always a good idea. If you guys haven't tried these Buxom lip liners, you need to. They're a nice, thick line. They're sharpenable, so you can get just the right amount of precision with your tip. Guys, this is it for this look right here. I hope that you liked playing with some color with me. I know that it is completely out of everyone's comfort zone, your comfort zone, my comfort zone. I am always bronzy, glowy, dewy, very minimal. Um, as far as color goes on the eyes, maybe, kinda. Not really, okay, I don't know. But I know that it is definitely not a color that you gravitate towards every day, this coral with the yellow. But I really hope that you guys like this combination. I hope that you guys like playing with colors. Comment down below and let me know if you have any other ideas for colorful looks. I also want you guys to hit that notification button and subscribe to my channel. That way you know of when I post new videos. Um, it was really fun seeing you guys and playing with some color. I will see you guys next time. Look me up on Instagram. It's Joviana DeJesus. I'll see you guys next time.